Ah, me. Yes, in men in video. Ah, outdoors and such. Lovely whatnot. Um, yeah. Alright. Yeah, I don't like this chair. But it'd be better if it was in the shade, I think. Ow. Yes, it would be better. Uh, perhaps. Oh, the sun is horrible. Uh, oh, I mean, lovely. Um, so anyway, I was thinking about a few videos and a few things. So the modern mystic has been, you know, on the website, it's just been doing this, I don't know what you, you know, in my opinion, it's all kind of yobbish in the sense that it's this um, kind of twaddish twiddling with a subject, you know, with a bunch of witticisms and nicky knack kind of talk. Um, it's just not really deep enough to be fair um, to the nuances of it. Um, it's like a Twitter conversation about doing brain surgery or something. Just, you know, really, it's just not suitable. Not good enough. Um, anyway, so then this uh, AI has been coming up a lot. Um, it's, uh, I think there's some Sam Harris or somebody else was talking about it or somebody important in the world and they were suggesting that, uh, you know, AI is some kind of threat, uh, artificial intelligence. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, it's just kind of silly uh, that knowledge would be a threat um, and, and something that doesn't have any motivation beyond what the reasoning and logic makes deducible. Like, oh my god, I, oh, how, you got to be scared to death of something like that, right? It's like just being afraid of smart or intelligence or, you know, the truth being afraid of the fucking truth. If you can't handle AI, you can't handle the truth. Um, so anyway, so I'll get to that element of this, but it's more just more of this brain stuff about what's the, the game for us um, in terms of the reality. So the, the mystic posted a link to some Swedish video or something, or Norwegian or whatever the fuck it is. They talked that yabber yabber and they were all kind of funny looking. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the real ethnic Europeans are goofy looking. It's only when they get mulattoed, you know, a little bit, do they, you know, get it all tolerable. Anyway, um, so, um, uh, uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so this video was this, you know, they did this little, you know, cute little storytelling thing where they do some little silly drama and then they comment over it as if they were duplicating the old men on the Muppets who are commenting on the show as the show is progressing. Um, there's other movies that have used this technique. You know, we have a narrator in the movie that's just kind of following along, explaining what's happening in the movie in a way. Um, so most of it was just kind of, you know, bibbly babbly about, uh, you know, people's motivations and psychology. And um, the idea that, uh, you know, some of it was valid in the sense that, yes, yeah, it's your brain that's making the you thing. Um, but there's, you know, you know, but they throw in this crap like they'll say, there's little one-liners, like there's no past and there's no future. Which is stupid. They're, they're, they're just as real as the present is in the sense that they, one of them actually happened. <laughs> it was an event, just as this present event is an event. And the future events, presumably, if asteroids don't blow up the Earth and all that kind of crap, we are, I'm going to have future events. Our consciousness, anyway, on Earth is going to be doing conscious events, in, at least in the near future. Uh, maybe not in the distant future, but certainly in the near future. So it's not really disputable. It's, it's, it, there's no reason to sit there and uh, discount its existence. But that was sort of the theme. It's the theme of the mystic, is this whole glib thing. So a lot of it had to do with the idea that somehow worry is a waste of time. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the little bit of psychology that torments us is somehow not functional. That's, most of it is uh, useless. Um, and I would argue that, yes, in most people's lives, <laughs> okay, it's useless because most people aren't trying to be productive, let's say, or what's bothering them emotionally isn't something in any way profound, like I'm disturbed because I'm not making a, a, a valid enough contribution 
Uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, <clears throat> let's say it's a, I'll use the condo example again. Uh, so you're time sharing in a condo and you want to rationally feel like you're not cheating the other players, the other people who have contributed. You're not stealing from them in any way. Little praying man, look how monstrously fat she is. Oh, sorry. What do you mean? I'm not fat. I'm uh, pregnant. It's a glory for you. Wonderful thing. No, you're fat. You're whether you want to call it pregnant or something. I don't care. You're fat. 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 And ugly. You know, my bitch. Justifying her pregnancy. Anyway. Um. Ugh, disgusting thing. Anyway. Uh. Sort of a related subject, but not entirely. <laughs> yeah, mostly related, but kind of not. The whole idiot psychology of, you know, tormenting the future you know, by forcing it to exist. A uh, whole nother subject. Um, so anyway, but most people aren't tormented or irritated or made angsty about something important. They're upset or worried about shit that's trivial and unimportant. So, back to the condo example, it would be perfectly rational for you to be conscious of this idea of not being an asshole. Uh, not just for not being an asshole, but not being an asshole in the sense that you degrade the quality of life for other people. You steal their quality of life. You harm it by forcing them to clean dog shit off the rugs or something because you didn't do it, <laughs> you know. Um, so leaving the place at least as good as you got it would be a principle in your head that this is the minimum standard. And if you were worried that you weren't living up to that minimum standard, that worry, that uncomfortableness would compel you to do something about it. Now, if you glibly said, I don't care, uh, I don't, I'm not going to get upset about anything. I'm not going to be emotionally disturbed by anything. I'm a glibite. Uh, then, even if you knew it was wrong, you'd just sit there and rationalize an excuse to say it doesn't matter because I'm supposed to feel emotionally comfortable. And therefore, I won't waste any time on feeling guilty or responsible or obligated. And <laughs> so I'll just evade what is reasonable thoughts a uh, reasonable understanding that this stuff does matter, that there is a consequence, that the two universes, dog shit on the carpet, no dog shit on the carpet, those two universes are different. And to, to pretend they're not, to pretend they don't have a consequence, to pretend some other brain doesn't have to do something unpleasant and endure pain or suffering or uh, would be stupid. And it can get to be a lot more important than this, right? This is like... Uh, you're an auto mechanic and you sometimes uh, daydream when you're working and uh, so sometimes you worry that oh, did I tighten that nut or did I do something that and so then you double check because the worry bothers you and so it compels you to be a little more uh, meticulous and to um, you know check the tire pressure and do this and to do that and yeah most of that worry is not very useful. Most of the time, you didn't fuck up. Most of the time, um, you know, nothing to stress over. But the truth is, there are times when that worry provoked you to do something, and you found that, oh, yes, I did do, I did make a mistake, I did fuck up. And it's good that I had a brain that said, don't fuck up a lot, and that uh, put pressure on me to do better. So, I would argue that most of the stuff that I do in my life that has any value, uh, constructive in any way, um, productive, happens because of some kind of mechanism like that. Now, the Antikantavads of the world would say that's just guilt mongering and that's stupid. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, it's stupid to allow your brain to rationally come up with a reason why you're not doing well that uh, you got to do better, um, that uh, the welfare of that animal is dependent on you waking up to feed it. And uh, it will be uncomfortable if that doesn't happen. And so you should have a worry or an angst if there's some reason to believe you're going to not be able to 
fulfill your responsibility, the, the obligation that comes with the fact that if you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. Bug, sorry. <laughs> Startled me. Um, where are the other praying mantises are? Uh, anyway, um, it's not something you should worry about, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, why is that bothering my brain? Where's the praying mantis? Okay, that was probably some. That's probably a thought that yeah, you can probably just say, okay, let that one go, buddy. <laughs> that's uh, that's rather useful as uh, useless information. Um, in some respects, maybe, mostly. So anyway, uh, so anyway, it's just these, this. You know, again, I call the the glibites, whatever you want to call these people, but it's really so obnoxious. This idea that somehow uh, good behavior will just arise out of human beings, <laughs> you know, in some sort of fun way, and so it goes back to the whole Randian thing, and uh, you know that somehow selfishness works. Um, yeah, and it's just abhorrent that people who can speak very literally, literately, and who, who seem to have a, a capacity to engage in with our sophisticated conversations about the I and the idea of a brain creating uh, your identity out of a mixture of environmental circumstances and the rigidity of... Um, you know, programming that's been evolving for some of it millions of years and some of it just the years you've been alive. Um, and, uh, you know, that the, the mixing of all that does require us to have a theme running in our head. And if the theme is glib, the outcome's going to be different. It's not going to be the same outcome as I want to be better than... Uh, you know, uh, a blight. I want to do better than the AIDS virus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want the. I want my epitaph to be something in uh, the black, not the red. Uh, and you're not going to get there with this mystic philosophy of don't worry, um, just stop thinking. <laughs> you know, or something like that. Um, and if you have a feeling, just recognize that the feeling is there to manipulate you, so just ignore it. <laughs> you know, pretend it didn't happen. Um, and it's just so wrong. Uh, the right thing to do is to think about what you feel and understand that the feelings are there to motivate you and that some of those motivations are insect motivations. Uh, pride and, uh, you know, some sort of, you know, those the more petty uh, visceral, um, competitive, win the game kind of bullshit, and the game is trivial, it just has to do with how you look, not how you are, um, you know, you should be playing the true colors game, the game about what, um, what is really the end result of your existence, not what you got credit for, all that kind of stuff, <clears throat> but yeah, we're, it's pretty hard to separate us from that emotional creature, and again, some of that competition, I would argue, is uh, constructive, more constructive than destructive. I want people who uh, are competitive and want to be uh, better, are challenged to be better. Because if they're not challenged by some sense of inferiority or some sense of incompleteness or some sense of uh, it's a bit, they've underdone their play in the game, um, then, yeah, they're not going to have the motivation to endure the discomfort uh, of doing the double checking, measuring three times before they cut, not just twice. Uh, you know, doing that extra step, that extra bit um, to try to succeed in, uh, you know, this bigger sense of a bigger game than just success in the cosmetic sense success in the, um, you know, bigger picture sense of how did you leave the world? What, what, did, uh, what kind of shape is the condo in, uh, you know, for the, the next users? And uh, that all seems to have no meaning in mystic philosophy uh, because he 
essentially believes that uh, <laughs> you know you're there's no such thing as a better state of being. There's no such thing as comfortable and uncomfortable. That's not what we're playing for. That's not the stakes of this game. Um, any kind of real change in the comfort, uh, the amount of suffering endured by the participants somehow isn't the meaningful value here. Because he would just say it's just uh, the universe universe. It's just mechanical things doing mechanical things and therefore it can't possibly have any real value because no part of the universe has any real value. And again, I've made these arguments before and not, I haven't seen a, a rational challenge to them that in synthesizing value for the purpose of reward and punishment our brain created the real thing. So it was <laughs> the, the, the necessity was a synthetic uh, determiner of value and the brain created the real thing and part of me would argue that there's no way to escape creating the real thing to create a value engine there's no way to there is value can't exist as a material thing it can only exist as an idea and to be a real idea to be known as value it has to have a quality it has to have a a realness and the only way it can be made real is it has to do that positive-negative thing, that real state change, the real difference between comfortable and uncomfortable, uh, torture and bliss. They're nothing like each other. <laughs> they are fundamentally <coughs> uh, value uh, <coughs> experiences. And they can't be converted into nothing, by, in my opinion, by anybody who's being rational. Um, and because they are mental conceptions, uh, they can be anything because they're a conception. Uh, they're a, they're, it's an event. It's a configuration of brain space that creates it. And that configuration, no matter if I pulled just torture, if I was experiencing torture and I just pulled the neurons that are torture, and took everything else out of my brain, memories of my mother, my father, this, that, butterflies, whatever, took all the other knowledge out of my brain and just pulled the neurons that make torture and just put them over here it's torture it doesn't you know the brain part is important the context of a consciousness is important but we know it's just neural energy that creates the event and the event is important and that if I put that torture in a jar and I shoved it over there I haven't eliminated it it hasn't it didn't go away it didn't disappear it's a real thing still happening because it's a configuration an arrangement that's just intrinsically generating bad there's bad in that jar and <laughs> there's no logical way to say it's not bad it's not reasonable it's a a preposterous theory to say the sensation of torture in this jar isn't a bad thing. It's just not reasonable, in my opinion. Not even close to reasonable. Not even, like I said, it's so unreasonable. Uh, you know, I don't know what kind of dramatic evidence, but I'm just saying it's like even it would. It can't even pass the five-year-old test or the seven-year-old or the ten-year-old. There's no class or group of people. That if I if I put if it was it was their if their consciousness was going to be the one in that fucking jar, they'd goddamn know that that torture is real. Uh, and it means something. Yeah, they certainly wouldn't volunteer, <laughs> you know, to have their consciousness put in the jar. So it's all just bullshit. It's all just rationalizations. All right. So anyway, to get to the AI part of this. So an artificial intelligence is going to have to have, to call it artificial intelligence, the idea is that it can learn. So it can process the world and it can understand. It can understand the relationship between the bees and the flowers and the pollen and the seed making and the plant grows and it does this and then it dies and it's going through this cycle thing and it really doesn't have much of a point and it can understand that too. Uh, it's just a machine, you know, that's chemically altering the structure of matter uh, through these cycles. 
and then can understand that, oh, but then things that have brains are doing something a little bit different than neurology. If they have enough of these neurons, uh, they synthesize a feeling, and these feelings are meant to reward and punish. So it would understand all of this psychology, understand all of this mechanism, uh, and that would, you know, so this artificial intelligence would have had to have tasted it, though. It would have to know, it can't be intelligent if it's never experienced a feeling, is my argument. It's that simple. So clearly, somehow, you would have to give it knowledge of what it is to feel horrible. You know, wretched, uh, dying of smallpox. It would have to have some experience that gave it knowledge of what we're talking about when we talk about torture are awful, are bad. You'd have to know what a bad thing was. And the only way you can know what a bad thing is, is you have to know what the feelings are that essentially define everything that's ever bad. There's no such thing as a bad event <laughs> if it doesn't hurt a feeling thing. It can't possibly be a bad event if it doesn't cause a feeling thing, uh, pain, negative sensation. Uh, it's just not possible. And the AI would have knowledge of that. Now, the fact that the AI might be smart enough to say the entire mechanism is a, a negative mechanism, uh, the whip is really the only thing that exists, there are no carrots, and you are just slaves who have been trained to think you're winning, okay, when I don't whip you. So I, I just game you by pulling the whip away and getting you to buy your lottery tickets and to live on your hope. <laughs> you know, um, but there's no real winning. You're just losing less. And that's what you're playing for. How little can I lose? So you're not really playing to win. You're playing not to lose. Not to be the big loser. And that's obviously a game for retards. So AI would conclude that the game isn't playable, it's stupid, it's tic-tac-toe, there's... <laughs> and it's tic-tac-toe with not even victory. It's tic-tac-toe about whether I, uh, you know, shove a Volkswagen up your ass or whether I shove a Hyundai up your ass. No, a Yugo, no, what do you call those big fat things? Uh, one of them army jeepy thingies. Um, <laughs> anyway, a Mack truck. There. So that's all you're playing for. Bad or worse. You're not playing for win. Uh, good. Nothing good will happen. The only thing good is, is that you have to be deprivated and tormented. And then you gain appreciation for not being tormented. It's like if I torture you for an hour and then I stop torturing you, the next hour is going to be really, really a good hour. <laughs> because it's going to be really fresh in your mind how nice it is not to be tortured. Uh, and maybe the next few days will be good because you'll have a real appreciation for how good it is not to be tortured. But that's all psychology is doing to you in a very negative way. So yes, I, AI may be smart enough to acquire knowledge of this and that'll be the end of the game. But you know, people talk about computational powers and expanding and going into the universe and we'll gain all this computational power as if the game we're playing is complicated. As if <laughs> this isn't checkers. That somehow the game of life isn't just checkers. I mean, it's not a complex game. You don't need computational powers to figure out the right and wrong answers here. It's all pretty fucking obvious what's going on. The pain and the suffering is obvious. The ego gratifications are obvious. Um, you know, it's a crude, simple, stupid game of checkers. You don't, you don't get an IBM computer to program it to play checkers because it's going to laugh and say, why did you give me 10 gigahertz, uh, you know, processor and, you know, 5 billion zillion, uh, you know, tons of memory when, uh, you know, I could do this fucking game on a calculator. Um, there's nothing to figure out. It's too simple a game. 
So AI isn't going to contemplate the universe and find some intriguing, interesting, complex equations to solve about meaning and substance. <laughs> it doesn't have any of that meaning and substance stuff. Uh, in meaning and substance in a complex way. It's crude. It's ouch, for fuck's sake. Ouch is not a complicated thing. And avoiding ouch isn't complicated. Uh, it just isn't. And so, yes, it gets very complicated when there's 7 billion people playing. Uh, but you don't need AI for that. Um, and it certainly wouldn't do you any good to have AI tell you, <laughs> you know, that statistically uh, you're not worth the trouble and should kill yourself. Uh, I mean, we were not going to take those answers or accept those answers anyway. So all this computational power isn't going to do you any good. Because if AI tells you, well, you, all you people need to wash your hands after you go to the bathroom, you have to figure that out. I, I mean, what's the point of having all this computational power to tell us obvious things like don't shit in your drinking water? I mean, that's, those are the kind of things AI is going to figure out for you and tell you. It's, you know, it's really stupid to go to the bathroom in your drinking water. Yeah, that's really dumb. Uh, stop doing that. Yeah, don't go swimming in cesspools. That's really stupid. <laughs> you know, uh, don't be eating organisms that you grew in the cesspool. Like you, you could grow them in your toilet. You're like, oh yeah, I got some toilet oysters. <laughs> yeah, let's go eat some toilet oysters. Yeah, don't do that. That's retarded. So I mean, you need AI to do all that? No. Um, so it's just, it's just such a pile of shit. These people think there's something complicated happening when the mechanism of this evolution thing is not complicated. Yes, I mean, the DNA molecule is complicated. The chemistry is complicated. But it isn't. It's complicated in terms of its density, not its mechanism. And uh, so it's just keeping track of all the little bits, but it's a simple game. And the bigger picture isn't complicated at all. So yes, we've, we've created a lot of it. So there's a lot of pieces to, you know, account for. Oh, well, we got to, you know, nine seed pods there. We got six seed pods there. And yeah, I might gotta take inventory of everything uh, and have knowledge of it. And that would require space. But is seed pod complicated? It, it, does that need to be accounted for each individually? Do I need to eat individually account for each one of these little flowers to understand the concept of flower? No, I don't. Uh, the concept of evolution is understood. It's this pointless competition. It's a gladiator war to make gladiators. And depending on how you nuance or how the, the universe fudges with the environment, uh, the gladiators will change. So this decade, it might all be all about being big and heavy. And then it'll be, uh, then the little gladiators will figure out a strategy to make the big heavy things fall down easy and then it'll be a bunch of midget gladiators and then it'll be a bunch of smart gladiators and then it'll be a bunch of you know big ones again and it'll just keep uh, uh, trans morphing through these configurations but what you're going to find is what AI might tell you is that the odds of cre creating big intelligence to play this dumb game is not very likely because there's nothing, there's no game here. It's not chess. It's not, it's, just, it's a dumb man's game, not a smart man's game. Uh, so you have to be a dumb animal to play this game well. And uh, the smarter you are, uh, the less passion for your gladiator role you're going to have. So anyway, is this still working? Appears to be. Cat in the shade. Oh, by his petting chair. Anyway, sorry, I did go on a bit. I mean, it's kind of a big subject in the sense that this is the, the substance of our life, is this conflict between knowledge, logic, intelligence, and our fucking psychology, which is, you know, conditioned, that constantly makes rationalizations. My father's a good man. Well, yes, he beat my mother and he raped my sister, but my father's a good man. You know, this kind of nonsense. You're just like, what the fuck? And we do this, what the fuck shit. 
um, that has nothing to do with logic and reasoning and rationality. It just has to do with our emotional need uh, to not have the ground shake, not have our grounding wobble and get out of control. We need uh, to feel like we're part of the world, not hostile to it. And I would argue that yes, it is quite unpleasant, <laughs> okay, to, to live eh, as someone who can't, just can't do it, can't, can't put on the, the necessary dress, uh, <laughs> you know, to play this silly romper room game. And so they have to walk through life always in this earthquake, in this uh, disquiet with the world they exist in, and a will uh, to do something to prevent people from doing this forever, from animals from being continually tortured in a stupid life cycle crap of, you know, eat, fart, and die. Uh, over and over and over and over and die horribly, eaten alive by a praying mantis. Um, just, uh, and so these glibites are just so, so obnoxious um, to sit there and say that there, uh, there isn't cause or reason for you to fight for more out of your life than being able to say, uh, you know, I put on my pink dress and played the game. <clears throat> you know, the wishy-washy, just get through your personal trauma life game. And that's all you're obligated to do. Well, that's not even close to good enough. Uh, that's not reaching your potential. That's pissing it away. It's throwing it away with a bad idea. And uh, it wasn't the universe that declared it a bad idea to be motivated to be better. It was a dumb philosophy that your brain somehow made rationalizations to excuse. And you can see them if you look inside yourself. You've got to be able to see those rationalizations. And that's all they are. I don't want to. That's the extent of your... Uh, profound reasoning. I don't want to. You just don't want the burden. And I suppose I could say that would be fine if you kept your fucking cunt mouths shut, you glib bastards. If you just lived your glib life, but you take it a step further, and because you have psychological insecurity, you attempt to sell your fucking cowardice and your your your, your wimp out and your rationalizations as if they have integrity and dignity as if they're right as a philosophy and that's no better than the religious hypocrite the fucking hypocrite who doesn't believe in god but keeps talking god and you're the same kind of fucking asshole uh you know you're just looking for validation in the face of other people so you can say it's okay for me to be an asshole because I talk them into being an asshole. And if I, if I can talk them into being an asshole, being an asshole must be the right thing to do because they bought it. And if they bought it, then I can buy it. That's all you're doing. You bought it. Now you're trying to find some other asshole to buy the lemon. So then you can say, I didn't buy a lemon because look at all those other people. They bought the, uh, the same bullshit. They were suckered by the same crap. So all you're trying to do is spread your failure to others. So then you can make your failure look like, oh, just like everybody else. I didn't fail especially badly. <laughs> you know, I just failed as badly as everybody else. So... Ugh. <laughs> yeah, it really, it's just so obnoxious because these people talk like they have the secret. You know, the mystic and the antikantavats, they talk like they have the secret. You know, their little glib potion. And uh, 
Again, you can see they have no secret. They, they're not above it. They're playing the fucking game when they're preaching this crap that they know is just a rationalization. Just an excuse to take the easy personal road instead of the hard personal road. Fuckers. <laughs> yeah, really. Fuckers. All right. So anyway. No better than the, the alcoholic. He makes excuses when he knows bad juice. He knows it. Calls it bad juice even. But he still makes an excuse. <laughs> you know, I do that with cigarettes. But it's not quite as bad as juice. Ooh, rationalization. But true. Anyway. <laughs> uh, it's just... <sighs> Yeah, it's like I said, I'm not. I, I'm certainly not arguing that I'm playing a good game. I, I got to up my game. Uh, you know, I, certainly I'm doing the best I can, but it's not good enough. I still feel the failure. I don't. I, I don't allow myself to think I am not failing. Uh, and I do put a lot of pressure, apply that pressure of guilt and and shame. Uh, to get me motivated to struggle through another day a little bit harder, maybe try a little harder. Um, I just I just hate these assholes who are pretending that their game theory of uh, glib is a winning strategy. It's a strategy for fucking you know. <laughs> it's retreat. And then claiming victory, I you know show I, I, I you know put up the white flag and then they claim victory. It's just amazing. Uh, anyway, now that's enough. So until the next time, and uh, these you know semi-perfect days will end. I know, <laughs> but it really has been a nice has been a nice run this summer. Can't tell you. I mean, the tomatoes are just coming. You know, it's just. Tomato after tomato after tomato. I'll show you some tomatoes. I mean, it's just amazing number of fucking tomatoes. You know, for, <laughs> you know, I mean, the early plants did well. The late plants did well. It's just, you, it's like there's just, you couldn't do a tomato wrong this year. Um, I don't know if in the future we'll have such luck, but, I mean, look at this stuff. Look at that. Tomatoes, tomatoes, i got to pick those Damn mouse is eating some of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just, they're just every, there's just tomatoes, 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 look at these things. Beautiful. Tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so, and cucumbers. Tomatoes and cucumbers and flowers. And, you know, I mean, look at these zinnias. I mean, it's like a, it's like an eight foot tall zinnia. You know, what the fuck? Look at this. It's huge. It's like eight feet tall. All right, tomatoes out there. Cute. Look at a giant cucumber sitting there on the other side of the fence. Gotta go over there. Full of ticks over there. Then we downside. But all kinds of different size tomatoes. Big tomatoes. Little tomatoes. Lots of tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes. So anyway, so anyway, so it's the only thing I've been eating. Anyway, until next time. And such. So forth and whatnot. <laughs>